welcome back. This is a video I've had in the works for a while and I'm now just getting around to doing it. So my apologies for the tardiness and the timing of this. I know it's from a while back, but I've wanted to do this one for a while and I just never got around to it. Other things have came up and there's a bit of a lull in the idiot department. So while I had the chance, I'm going to do this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Riley Dennis's Poor People Deserve Nice Things. Now, as always, you'll probably hear my vape going on. That's because idiots infuriate me, and since I gave up smoking, it'll help. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, here's the thing. I have this really controversial opinion that poor people deserve nice things every once in a while. I think poor people don't have to be constantly suffering and struggling. I don't know why that's controversial, but here we are. You've okay... Hello, Riley. How you doing, man? <laughs> See, no gender law, no gender misgendering laws in where I'm from. Go fuck yourself, dude. Anyway, now, it depends what you mean by poor, because in Britain, I'm technically classed as poor. I earn under a certain amount a year, right? However, I am no, by no means am I fucking suffering. I am technically classed as poor, because I earn under 30 grand a year or something stupid like that. I think it's 20, I'm sorry, 20,000 a year I earn under, but then again, I only need to successfully live comfortably as I am now on, what, 16 grand? Right? I have internet, I have Sky Television, I have flat screen TVs, Xbox One, um, you know, <laughs> I have a, a, a top of the range mobile phone, I have... Uh, Top of the range uh, tablet. I've got a Surface, you know, top of the range Surface. And um, we get the laptop. We get the, you know, it's just I've got nice things. I've got a three-bedroom house with a front and back garden. Um, the car, you know, it's a case of. I mean, well, the wife drives the car most of the time. I've got the motorbike, but um, you're gonna love that. My bike, MZ seven fifty. Oh, Czechoslovakian beauty, ancient thing. But anyway, um, no, uh, as I was saying, I have nice things, right? So, what do you mean by poor, Riley? Crack it in. Let me hear. Let me hear what you've got to say. Come on. You've probably seen these graphics from Fox News that everyone made fun of a few years ago where they were saying that poor people aren't really poor if they have refrigerators and microwaves. More recently, you may have heard about bills being proposed to stop poor people from spending food stamp money on soda, fast food, steak, lobster, all that kind of stuff. Or programs being put in place to drug test welfare recipients. To me, it seems like all of this stuff kind of stems from like two ideas. The first is that poor people have to be in a constant state of suffering to really be poor. So if they have any kind of nice thing in their life, they're suddenly not poor and shouldn't be allowed to receive any kind of government assistance. Hey retard! Yeah you, you retard! Well you're wrong really for a fucking start. Right, um don't be retarded. Right. Now I am no stranger to substances that have been known to be illegal in my younger, more adventurous days. However if people are claiming benefits Welfare, if you want to call it. We call it being on the dole here, being on welfare. If you're on the dole and you have a pile of kids to... Let's, see, you, let's, let's do your favourite thing. Let's find a straw man here. You like to straw man a lot, don't you? So let's do this and let's see how you like being straw manned. You have a single mother with five children to, let's say, four different dads. That's two to one and one each to another three guys, right? And that woman is claiming child benefit. But let's just do it in a term you'll understand. We'll do it in the welfare system where you're from. Right, um, instead of trying to explain it from our end, because you obviously have no idea about the political landscape. Anyway, uh, right. Mother's on welfare with, as I said, five children to four fathers. Um, she's claiming child support for each of those children. She, let's say the father of the two, let's say she was married to that one, so she's getting alimony from him, right? But it isn't enough, and she's trying to claim benefits. But here's the kicker, right? She only got, she only divorced him to get access to the kids so she can claim child support and welfare, right? She spends her money, not on the kids, 
but on drugs. Right now, no offence, I would want to know the taxpayers' money, money that I'm spending, right, to fund people who don't have a job or who can't work because they have X amount of children from X amount of partners. Right now, I don't see that's unreasonable. Right, yes, it's a lot of bit of an invasion of privacy, but I do understand why they would want to do that. I understand it is a bit of it's not, but. I do see it from both sides of the coin. I'm a realist. I'm a grown-up. I know that the world is not a nice place and sometimes things have got to be done that isn't always in the best interest of everyone. Right? But in the best interest of the taxpayer to make sure their money is going to people who actually need it and are not just too fucking idle to work. The people who are disabled or who really have physical ailments, who can't do anything, they have mental ailments that hold them back from functioning societally well, you know, becoming an upstanding member of the community in a sense of going out, getting a job and providing economic stability for themselves, if you want to put it in a nice sort of sounding way. But you still think that poor people deserve nice things and they, because they have a microwave, no it's not that. Exactly what I said it is, is a case of some people who spend money, people, government spending money, taxpayers money, to fund people's drug habits. Now, single person, if they want to take as much drugs as they want, say they kill themselves, by all means, that's their choice. Who am I to judge them for wanting to live their life, but when they're destroying lives of children and stuff like that, who don't get an option, who don't get a say, and who their parent are, the parent or parents are the ones who are to provide for them and they're not been able to do their job because they're spending their money on drugs. Yeah, my views on this are probably not going to be very popular, so let's continue. The second part of this is that people think they're entitled to morally dictate the lives of welfare recipients because technically they're being paid with taxpayer money. For the first part of that, I think people just have no concept of what it's like to be poor. Like, a refrigerator is a pretty basic amenity in the US. You kinda need it to store food. I can imagine like 500 scenarios where someone has a refrigerator and is still struggling financially. It's not like a fridge is some opulent sign of wealth. You could easily be living paycheck to paycheck, barely being able to afford your rent and eating instant ramen for dinner every night while still living in an apartment with a fridge. But that's not the only thing. Like, a lot of poor families have cars. A car is often a necessity in areas that don't have a good public transportation system. And lots of jobs even discriminate against people who don't have a reliable form of transportation. So if a person or a family is able to save up for a car somehow, that doesn't automatically mean they're not poor anymore. You could be... Oh my god, you just ramble on, right? Okay. Everything you say there, yeah, okay, fair enough, you may have a point. They are discriminating. Yes, but the fact is, people need reliable people who can show up at work. And if you have a car and you can show up because you have a car and you can show up when you're going to instead of relying on public transport which can fail consistently right because like the buses buses are allowed to be late but they're not allowed to be early where I'm from the bus drivers get in trouble if they're early if they're late they just go ah don't worry about it right so public transport's unreliable you can't rely on public transport so yes employers are going to favour people with their own transport over people without it I would, to be honest. I mean, I would favour somebody with a fucking driver's licence over somebody without... Or somebody, not even with a driver's licence, somebody with a car. Because there's been many, many questions in any... Do you have your own transport, yes or no? And if you have, if you can say yes, it's a big standard to get yourself into a job. Right, and yes, right, people do live paycheck to paycheck. Everybody in the world sometimes lives paycheck to paycheck. Right? It doesn't mean they're fucking inherently poor. It doesn't mean you have to spend more taxpayers' money to give them things that they haven't earned or they don't deserve. And I'm all for willing to give people what they need to live on within the eyes of the law, within the eyes of morality. As long as they have enough to make sure they're fed, clothed, heated and have a roof over their head. That's all. That's fine, yeah. Absolutely. Right? But extra stuff like... Uh, fizzy juice and McDonald's and stuff like that. If you're getting government support because you can't look at you can't get a job to look after you or your family once in a blue moon take your kids out to McDonald's right as a little treat because you, you, you scrape up some money however 
when you go around your mor when you go around your shopping in your supermarket, your local, wherever is it, what, Walmart, wherever, as you shop, right? And your cart is filled with more Diet Coke, or sorry, Pepsi, Coke, um, crisps, chips, sorry, um, candy, sweets for British, but candy for Americans, right? And junk food, right? You're wasting your money when you could be spending it on more, more wisely and more efficiently. But if you're spending that money on drugs, and your kid, that's depriving your children of things because you have a habit that you could easily get shot of. If you have a little bit of willpower, like the like us grown ups do. Yes. Anyway, let's do this. Struggling financially and have some old beat up cars that you use to get to work. Things that may have once been luxuries are now relatively accessible, like smartphones, for instance. Lots of people seem to think that anyone who can afford a smartphone is not poor, but not every smartphone is a seven hundred dollar iPhone. In fact, you could buy a smartphone on Amazon for like fifty bucks now. And actually, lots of poor people rely on smartphones for accessing the internet because it. Okay. Excuse me. There was a tab break. Really. I have the top of the range HTC. To buy that outright is five hundred and maybe six hundred pounds, or dollars maybe eight hundred. Uh, sorry, seven hundred, seven hundred dollars maybe to buy it in American money, but in your money. However, my partner's phone is the a Samsung top of the range, Edge Samsung. That's six hundred pounds to buy. Right, that's more like eight hundred. That's more like seven hundred fifty dollars. Right, more towards the $800 mark. I'm not sure what the current exchange rate is. I'd have to double check. However, honestly, I mean, £500 is more like six and a half American dollar. So, rough guess, right? So, and I'm still classed as poor. So, yes, and I can I can buy these things outright because, I, again, I save. I'm smart with my money. I... I don't have the greatest paying job in the world, but that's not the problem. I, I love my job, and I'm very good at my job. Right? Now, as I said, it, I would technically be classed as poor because I earn under this X amount bracket for my area location. I earn under X amount, right? But I'm still not fucking dirt poor. You know, I'm not fucking struggling to put to keep the power on, I'm not struggling, well in your case your water gets shut off, but um, here I'm not struggling to keep the power on, I'm not struggling to keep the place heated, I'm not struggling to pay my bills, you know, it's, it's one of those ones, and I still have some disposable income left over to enjoy um, vaping rather than smoking, which to be quite honest, it is cheaper than smoking, but the initial expenses are heavy. But um, you can save up a lot of money doing that way. But yet, I still have it. I'm still able to afford luxuries. Like, my Father's Day was fantastic. I said I'm a bit late getting around to doing this, but Father's Day was fantastic. I can afford little luxuries, right? Because I am wise with my money, yes. But because even though I'm technically classed as being in the poorer bracket, I am by no means poor, I'm no means rich. But I'm comfortable. I mean, I have cable, I have satellite television. I have uh, internet, wi wireless internet. I have, I'm quite a musician, I like music. So I have guitars and basses and keyboards and shit like that about. I've got uh, games consoles, Xboxes, Nintendos. You know what I mean? I have nice things. And I am classed as poor. So what do you mean by deserve nice things? The people who have absolutely no money whatsoever, right? And they're wanting to spend their money again. I say on drugs, and that's to look after family. They can. Oh, yeah, again, my views on this will probably get me into trouble. So I'm just going to leave that one there, and let's see what else you've got to say, really. In the US, in 2017, you really need access to the internet to be able to function as a part of modern society. Internet access is essential for finding jobs, paying bills, doing your taxes, and just generally keeping up with everything that's going on. But even if someone has a cheap smartphone, an old car, and a refrigerator, it's not like they're suddenly middle class or wealthy. You can have all of those things and still have a job that barely pays enough to cover your rent. I don't know what people expect, like everyone who has a roof over their head is financially secure. That's just not reality. Financial security requires a lot more than a refrigerator. It Okay, really, you're just basically rehashing everything you've just said, and you're making me rehash everything I've already said. 
I'm just going in circles here. Yeah, okay. Doesn't matter. Right, it's a case of some people's situations are worse than others. I'm sorry, this is the world we live in. Does it hurt your feelings? Probably. Do we care? No. Not in the slightest. <laughs> not at all. Don't give a shit. Really don't. Nobody does. So... Fuck you, really. <laughs> just saying. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. As always, my name is Alexander Kingsfallen. If you've liked this video, hit like. And leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe. And I will catch you in the next one. Thank you.